It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is David Harrison of the Locked On Commanders Podcast to tell you that U.S. Cellular is introducing us mode. It's kind of like airplane mode, but it's for people. It's a way to set up your phone so it doesn't get in the way of people really being with each other. Block distractions and make way for real connection. Give it a try. Visit U.S. Cellular in-store or online, and they'll help you set up your phone for us mode for free. Even if you're not a customer, built for superior 5G connection and real human connection. U.S. Cellular built for us. Find out more at uscellular.com forward slash find us. We check another day off the column in our countdown to the upcoming NHL season. And that means we've got all of the NHL news covered for you on the Thursday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Sebastian Ajo, what is going on with the Toronto Maple Leafs goaltending situation? Matt Murray now on LTIR. And we're going to finish off our second round rewind on that 2022 fantasy hockey draft. Let's get this paper. You're locked on fantasy hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back inside the lab, everybody, to your source for off-season fantasy hockey news. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. I am privileged to always be joined by my esteemed co-host, Mr. Steel Roden. Make sure you check out his work all across YouTube under NHL Quick Hits and all over the Locked On Network. I'm your boy, Big Flip Livingstone, on this side of the microphone. You know where to check me out. Dauber Hockey all across YouTube and wherever you find your betting takes. Steel. We're going to have a few of those takes on today's episode. <laughs> Sebastian Ajo, mega eight-year deal, getting the bag. He is the pillar of the offensive success for this team. I want a short bit of info on the Carolina Hurricanes because, you know, I've been covering them quite a bit. <laughs> but more importantly on today's episode, what is happening with these Toronto Maple Leafs? The cap situation is tricky. The blue paint is going to be a hot topic for both fantasy GMs and Leafs fans, so I want to pick your brain on that front. Mitch Marner, Barkov, Marit Sider, and others at the top end of this Fantasy Rewind 2022 draft. We'll break it all down for you. I'm going to throw it right over to you, Steele. Eight-year deal for Mr. Sebastian Ajo on a little bit of a down year. I expected more. I know what I think for next year. What do you think this means for his future success? Yeah, I think it was a little bit of, I think we can see a little bit of a bounce back season for Sebastian Ajo, 67 points in 75 games compared to 81 and 79 the year prior to that. Mm -hmm. Still, the peripheral stats were relatively the same, very consistent, 218 shots, 21 blocks and 63 or 59 hits, excuse me, great on the power play. Uh, you know, a couple nine game winning goals. He was so clutch for the Carolina Hurricanes in the regular season uh, yep. with a, a few other players in the NHL who are clutch as well. I think it's a little bit too much. Like it's not far mm. off from what mm. I thought he would get. I thought he should land somewhere around like 9.2, maybe 9.1 uh, okay. to see him get 9.7. So yeah, it's just a little bit high. Again, we're talking a, a very minuscule amount of money right now. 500,000 sure. is not too far off from where he's sure. at, but uh, that's where I thought he was. So he gets the mm. bag eight mm -hmm. years, 9.75 for Sebastian Ajo. But you're right. Yep. He's one of the, for me, I really do think Andre Sveshnikov is the top dog in Carolina. I absolutely Ooh, love him. But that's Sebastian a bit of a bold take. Ajo, Sebastian Ajo is obviously the guy there too. And, and Carolina Hurricanes, uh, obviously a very tough defeat in the postseason. So, yep. um, you know, he signs for eight years, 9.75 million. I expect him. Expect him to have a little bit of a bounce back season, 75, mm. 80 points. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, you know, third mm. round, third round, late second round for Sebastian Ajo. Again, it depends where, how you mm. feel about this player. Yeah. He's very talented, but I would probably fade him to a little bit mid third, late third round. I think even with expecting him to bounce back, that is still an accurate slot in for him because let's also remember the caveat with this Carolina Hurricanes team is they haven't been able to string together consistency offensively to be one of those top offensive threats. They sat just outside of the overall goal totals. I think they were in 16th this year, stealing mm -hmm. total goals scored. They were 20th in power play efficiency. 
So we know they can sometimes go on those droughts and struggle because of how good they are defensively. Rod Brindamore, I said this all up and down on the other episode while you were away, how much you and I both love Rod Brindamore and what he is doing. Don Waddell in the front office. This is just a very well put together franchise. Now they got that triple headed monster in the cage as well with Kochekov, Ranta and Anderson. That's got to be the most solid depth in the NHL right now headed into this season. And I guess what I wanted to say about Sebastian Ajo, I'm still fine with that projection of the third round, even end of the second round, if it's a deeper, you know, a deeper league steal, because I actually expect a whole lot yeah. more from this player. You mentioned Svechnikov. They bring in Bunting. They also bring in, uh, who was it that I also liked that they're, you know, they just brought in D'Angelo to help on that power play. Yep. Up front, they're balanced. Ajo, Jarvis, Tara Vining, Kotkin Yemi. I know question marks. Nakash. Bunting now. Jordan Stahl, I expect 90-plus points from Sebastian Ajo Steele. Yeah. I know that's high, and it might be tough for him to hit that number, but he's damn well good enough to do it, and yes. I'm expecting big things from Ajo. But why don't we shift topics right after you hit me with your take on that? Yeah, you know, I, I, again, 90 points might be a little bit too high it could for be. me. I still think 80, 85 points, again, is in his realm. And, again, they're they're a defensive team first. They always True. have been a defensive True. team. Obviously, the goals come from the defensive when they can break out of their zone, uh, you mm-hmm. know, without or with ease. What scares me about this contract, and it's exactly okay. what our good friend Michael Amato tweeted hey. as well. You saw the tweet. The thing that scares me about this contract is what does it mean for William Nylander? And we're going to move over to the Toronto Ooh. Maple Leafs. We're going, to talk, we're going to talk about Elias Samsonov. We're going to talk about mm-hmm. Matt Murray. And then we'll mm-hmm. get to Mitch Marner as well from yes. the draft line. But yes. what does this mean for William Nylander's contract for when he does potentially sign? Uh, it's a scary thing to think because it is. sometimes it's hard to compare centermen to wingers. But mm-hmm. that's probably in the realm of what Nylander is looking for. 9.75, $10 million. He believes he's at that money. Is he? Maybe not that high, but he's mm. a darn good and he's darn close to that to that number. So it scares me when uh you know you see the Alex to bring it, you see mm. this mm. Sebastian mm. Aho contract. Now. I hear you. I uh, hear the you. numbers very high. So I don't want to get too deep into nope, the William nope. Nylander future I hear you. contract. Uh, yep. well, you know, so that's my take on Sebastian Aho. Uh, Sebastian Aho. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's get over to Matt uh Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh mm-hmm. I'll throw it over to you because obviously Please. this is something uh that we really want to talk about but i want to hear your opinion first about a what do you Mm. think about the one year 3.9 million dollar contract for Mm -hmm. samsonov Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. what does that mean now that matt murray is on ltir here's my thing steel i called this situation in the toronto blue paint again a couple solo episodes i really missed you but i got my time to go off without you checking me which i think some of the listeners liked and maybe disliked but hey (laughs) That's why this is a free show. Make sure you like, subscribe, smash that like button, all of the above. Ilya Samsonov was 27, 10, and 5 with four shutouts last regular season. So it makes sense to me that he got a pay increase, number one. I think he was due that based on his regular season performance. And I'm pretty sure salary arbitration, I don't know if playoff numbers actually factor into that or not. I don't know fully. But when you look at his postseason numbers, and I'm pulling them up right now because I had them here. Oh boy, why am I struggling with this? Where's Samson off? <laughs> uh, anyway, I think he was four and four in the postseason steal. His not his save percentage was under 900 and his goals against was well over 3.5. So he needs to really figure it out because this team isn't looking for first round success anymore. And they're at a tipping point, I think, Steele, because everything going on with Matthews, you mentioned Nylander, the goalie situation, the cap situation, even with LTIR, Matt Murray, they're still projected at almost $3 million over the cap right now. So yeah. Treliving's going to have to get creative. And to bring it all back to Samsonov, yes, I actually think he's earned being the number one in this situation. Does that mean he is a pure surefire number one across the NHL? No. But he's going to still get to play behind a pretty good Toronto team. And this is what I wanted to bring it up and just leave it at this before we go to break. Matt Murray was twenty in 26 appearances, 14-8-2. So at times he was looking real good, but Samsonov proved at the main points of the regular season that he was the better goalie. So I'll just say this. He has a massive opportunity to prove himself here. He's only 26 years old. If he has a great year steal, there's going to be a lot of teams sniffing around for more than a one-year deal for this goalie. I don't know, though, what happens. Is Joseph Wall the guy to back this up? 
there is so many question marks in Toronto, and that's really my main takeaway here. I think he is actually, and I oh. would like him a lot more than Matt Murray in this position right Me now. Me too. From what I saw, Me in too. The, in, you know, in the short stint uh, in the regular season, as well as in the playoff when he came in for relief, when Sam Sonov went down to injury, I liked what I saw. I thought he was on top of his game. You know, obviously didn't get the outcome that he, all of us were expecting as Leaf fans, but I thought he was great, you know, and again, his contract yeah. is probably a huge factor in it as well. He's still, uh, you know, $766,000 is something that means something right now to this Toronto Maple Leafs organization mm-hmm. as they battle that cap. So uh, mm-hmm. I think they believe in his game. They believe in him enough to back him up and you need someone to at least back him up that you know is going to be at, be healthy because we don't know if Matt Murray would even be healthy and can stay healthy. So I like Ilya Samsonov at 3.9 for one mm-hmm. year. See what else he can do. Uh, I like Joseph Wall backing him up in this position. One year, $3.55 million contract awarded to Samsonov. I am also intrigued with Wall. I guess I'm just honestly stealing. We are going to go to break, people. I promise we're going to get to a little bit more. Why don't we just continue to talk about everything that is breaking across the league steal all summer long, like we continue to do. Make sure you're tuned and tapped in. But honestly, at the end of it all, steal. So look, this is the numbers I was looking at. 898 eight save percentage in nine appearances in the postseason. We know he had that injury. Wall did step in. He needs to be better because yeah. this team has cup aspirations. And when you have Austin Matthews and say what you will about the rest of the makeup of the lineup, they're good enough to go on a cup run. The Florida Panthers almost won a cup. The Toronto Maple Leafs can win a cup. I don't care what the Twitter Warriors want to say. By the way, everyone's busy in the Toronto Maple Leafs business. I think some people need to maybe stay in their lane and recognize that (laughs) this team is for real. Anyway, we're for real, Steel, and we're going to break down the rest of that second round. Mitchie Marner, Barkov, Marit Sider, some questionable reaches on Marit Sider. What happens? What does it mean for your draft? Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Take your first swing at betting on the MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to 200 bucks. That's right. Just 20 bucks down and you'll land 200 back in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend on everything from the money line to the total to who you think cranks that first dinger all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get that paper instantly. There's no better place to bet on the MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get up to 200 back in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. There's no off season for the true NHL fan, and there are no off days for locked on NHL. This offseason, Locked On NHL has you taken care of. In just 30 minutes every day, Locked On NHL will give you the latest on all the fireworks of the NHL offseason. Locked On NHL, free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform. So hit that subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all that love and support you give us every single day. And Mm. coincidentally, we are continuing with the Toronto Maple Leafs here. Mitch Marner coming in. We're continuing the draft rewind. He comes in at 18th overall in the second round. Uh, Again, this is super quick for us, but we I believe we both think that this is exactly where you should be you know somewhere between you know i would even bump him up a few spots anywhere between 14th and the 16th pick in the draft you had 99 points mm-hmm. one of the best crossing passers in the league oh uh, good one, one of the best good passers one. in the league uh for that 36 power play points he's a dual threat on the on the pk as well had five shorthanded points and yep. was actually third in selkie trophy so now hey. that Patrice Bergeron hey hey, hey, hey. His defense has been getting better. Still. He could maybe uh, take home some Selkie trophies, but Mitchie Marner, Thank you. yeah, 14th, 16th, 15th hey. pick right there in the second round. I actually am kind of sick and tired of the Toronto Maple Leafs fan base coming at Mitch Marner for anything. This guy has done nothing but be an absolute star since the second he stepped on the ice. And I get the frustrations. 
but sometimes fans in markets that are a bit butthurt steal, and I've been butthurt before over Toronto sports across the realm. Don't get me started on the Toronto Blue Jays. Mitch Marner has gotten it done, and I know he goes on spurts of not scoring, right? That one season in 59 games, he only has 16 goals. I get it, but let's have a look at some of these other numbers. He's finished top 17, so top 20 in Selkie voting yeah. in five straight seasons. Mm -hmm. People get over hype. They get overreactive on when things don't go right. Uh, this guy has 90 plus points in three of the last six seasons. He's elite. What he can do wherever he's placed on the ice is also special. He's got vision. He's got hands. And I'm not here for any of the Mitch Marner hate. And I'm so with you. He went on that special, historically good heater as well. Not many players are able to bring it night in and night out like that, right? They go on real quiet spurts. I think Mitch Marner is right there as another 90 yeah. to 100 point guy steal. I see triple digits in this man's future. He's 25 years old. You know, I like to butcher birthdays. I'm not getting that one wrong. <laughs> 25 years old. He is a superstar on any other team. He might be the number one guy as well. I love me some Mitchie Marner. And also last year, his giveaway takeaway numbers getting even better at a plus 11 rate yeah. on takeaways. He's getting good at other ends of the ice. I love me some Mitchie Marner. And I'm going to predict Steel right now. 104 points for my boy. I think so as well. He's going to finally crack that triple digit number. And actually, funny enough, a little side note here. I actually hey. ran into him. I ran hey. into him the other day at the at the golf course I'm working at. He was playing yes. with Anthony Sorelli and a few other Weird. hockey players. So uh, I, I yeah, like no. some Sorelli action. Too, I like though. we do like Sorelli over here. We also like Alexander Barkov coming mm -hmm. in at 17th overall in the mm -hmm. fantasy draft. Let's keep uh, this I'll make quick. this real. Yeah, I'll make this one real quick. I yep. think he falls anywhere between the 23rd and 29th pick mm. in the draft. Finished mm. with 78 points in 68 games. Yeah. Uh, obviously, went from Huberto to Kachuk, so it's not too shabby mm. with the players he's playing with. The one concern I have about Barkov Hit is me. he rarely plays a full season. He's only played a full mm. season once in his career. You know, I'll give him two times because he had a season where he played 79 games. But yeah. other than that. He typically only plays 68, 67 games in a season. Good so point. that scares me a little bit. But other Good than point. that, he's playing with Matthew Kachuk. He's got Reimer. Hey. He's got Bennett. Mm -hmm. I like the players he's playing with. And obviously, he, he himself is a stud. So Barkov, yeah. second round, late, uh, early third round. I'm fine in the third round all day. I don't know for those exact reasons if I want. And I know, actually, shouts to Blake Creamer. When you talk about injuries on the factors that you have to consider when you're drafting yep. a player – you know, take it as you will, because I actually factor in injuries a little bit more than I think Blake does because he just takes the best available player, which yeah. I can't hate that strategy either. It's worked out for him, obviously. Barkov, though, is one of those guys that when he is healthy, he is right there as all elite, all star, right there in the mix as the guys that I want leading my team. But this is where we've done this before, Steel, right? Maybe we have to separate how much we love a player and their ability to bring it for their team and success. And what about your fantasy team? Because if man's are on the shelf for 20 and yeah. you took him in the second round and the likes of Kale McCarr and others are going <laughs> in that second round, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm with you 100%. But speaking of Selkie, my man's also been right there in the top mix as a dual mm -hmm. threat forward. Shouts out to Alexander Barkov. The injury factors now he's entering his 28th season, uh, age 28 season. Let's keep an eye on the situation, though, because also – Florida's got their target on their back now, right? Yeah. They're not going to be surprising any teams this year. The NHL is on notice, and trust me, there are some teams that, speaking of being butthurt, Boston Bruins coming for them, <laughs> Leafers coming for them. You know what I'm saying? They're yeah. not slipping by any team, so maybe let's just be wary if you're ready to put the return cup on this title on this team. Might not be happening, and that might affect Barkov's success as well. It might as well, and, and you know – they will have a target on their back because yeah. that was just an absolute. Hey, crazy Matthew Kachuk was run. talking some smack, he and deservedly so. But yep, that yep. goes both ways. It does go both ways, and let's get over to this next Please. player real quick before we get yep. over to break. Moritz Cider, what a shocker! Coming in at 16th overall, and <laughs> just an absolute horrific pick in the fantasy draft. Horrific pick, uh. and. 
I, I don't get it twisted. I don't, I, I'm mm-hmm. not going to put any hate on. I'm not putting mm-hmm. any hate on Cider. I think nope. he's a wonderful player. I think he's yep. a fantastic defenseman. He's yep. already averaging over 23 minutes in his first two seasons for the Detroit Red Wings because they need him to. That's how bad they need him. Right. And again, he's got incredible stats. He's played a full 82 games both years, combined for 358 hits, 351 mm-hmm. blocks, mm-hmm. 327 shots in 164 games in the two seasons. He's got great peripheral stats, but I don't understand. There's just no way you draft a 22-year-old defenseman going into his second season, 16th overall on a rebuilding Detroit Red Wings team. This is not Kale McCarr. This is not Miro Heiskanen. This is not Rasmus Dahlin. He he still be a talented defenseman, but he's just not them quite yet. His ADP is actually 48.6. I think that's a little bit too high for me still. I'm thinking round five, maybe even early round six. I think this actually might be someone who played a little bit much of a victim of listening to me talk about Marit Sider all summer long last year. And would I have said second round? I don't think so. But he would have been right there in the third and fourth rounds. And yeah, that would have been also too early. But I actually don't think, Steele, that this year it's that far off fourth fifth round and maybe that's because i'm high on this player but you mentioned the peripherals the hits went up the blocks went up the main thing i think that happened to this player aside from the same thing the league took notice right guys don't like to be embarrassed by young 20 year old players they took note on marit cider and i think they took note on the detroit red wings as well what i'm trying to get at is this guy is gonna have 50 plus points he is gonna have 190 200 plus hits and blocks His numbers on minutes, I think, even go up. And the Detroit Red Wings got better. Do I think he should be in the second round? No. Is it the third round? I'm also going to say no. But I'm very comfortable still taking him as one of my first couple of D-men off the board. And I understand your apprehension. And that's just my personal opinion. But what went on in Detroit last year, I got to watch them play live. It was a bit of a mess. The goaltending was a little up and down. Vili Huso is now the clear-cut number one. No more Alex Nedeljkovic to mess with that. This guy is going to bounce back. And I'll just leave it at this. I'm with you. Don't overreach on him again because he's only 21, right? The, there's going to be some growing pains. He's, and that's exactly he's 22. What we saw. He's 22. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> my bad. He's 22 now. Frig steel. You know how I, this is why I, I need you. you, my man. I Thank you. you. No worries. You and I are not far off. You know, maybe just a couple of picks uh, between us with Marie yeah, Sider. It's close. Think, it's close. It's very close. Uh, we got three other players to talk about Roman Yossi, Miko mm-hmm. Rantanen, and of mm-hmm. course, Brady Kichuk of the Ottawa Senators. But first, Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Hammer that subscribe. Hammer that follow button. We are almost at 900 subscribers. We are, we hey. love all the downloads we're getting this offseason. We love that you're tuning in in the summertime. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, make sure you hit that subscribe. Hit the follow button. Leave us a good review uh, if, you lo- if you love tuning into the podcast. We love hearing all that feedback. And let's yep. continue on this 2022 draft rewind second round, starting mm-hmm. with Roman Yossi coming in at 15th overall. And I, first of all, I'm very glad that he got drafted ahead of Murray Sider because if he get dra- if he got drafted after Murray Sider, <laughs> we would have a problem. Second of all, I yeah. like this player a lot. I absolutely love I know Roman Yossi. Yep. Uh, I've traded for him multiple times over the years. And mm-hmm. again, uh, he, at 33 years old, he continues to get it done. He's been averaging over 25 minutes for the last 10 years consistently. Yeah. Had 96 points the year prior, had 59 points in 67 games this past mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. And he scores a lot of goals. He scores a lot of goals as, as a defenseman. He's one of the best and most consistent goal scoring defensemen every single year. Yeah. Uh, the past five, six, seven years. Uh, mm-hmm. For a matter of fact, he's still, you know, he's still putting the shots up 270 shots. Has the blocks, 150 blocks. Great on the power play. Actually had five game-winning goals as a defenseman. Uh, his ADP was 21.2. I Again, I, I am very keen on this defenseman, but he mm. is up there in age right now. So, so. I, would also, I would also fade him a little bit down to okay. the third round. I think okay. that's exactly third round is where he should be going right now. Again, mm-hmm. he, he did only play 67 games. So if he's fully healthy and plays a full season, his stats go up as well. So this is one of those things, and I don't want to do the if they play a full season. I just want to say, if you're predicting right now 
Who is the more valuable? And I'm not just going to say points. I mean, who gets the more fantasy points next season? Is it Marit Sider in your opinion, or is it Roman, Roman Yossi. Yossi? It's Roman Yossi. It's Roman Yossi. Okay, I think 100%. it's going to be. I think it's going to be close. I, I really do. Close at all. <laughs> well, but when you look at the peripherals, though, his hits aren't anywhere close to Sider's, right? His blocks well, are also. You, you said you said more. You said more points, right? Like I fantasy mean, points or fantasy points. Okay, that's what fantasy I'm saying. points, not just overall yes. points. I mean, still, fantasy still value. Roman, still Roman Yossi. Still Roman Yossi. Still Roman Yossi. I'm fair. I'm fine with that take. I'm just saying it's going to be very close, and the injury caveat that you mentioned is something that you don't necessarily have to worry about as much with the wear and tear of Marit Sider. Here's my thing though. I'm not going to knock a guy that in 827 career games has over 600 career points and the year before getting 96 and he should have won that Norris trophy. Who won it the year before? I like that was here. Hold on, let me, was it McCarr? Okay. never mind. Then that, yeah, it was aside from the historically yeah. crazy <laughs> season McCarr had, Roman Yossi <laughs> got robbed on that Norris trophy. It should have been a 1A, 1B situation. Mm -hmm. But looking at his career steal, aside from last year, which, you know, he had the injuries, Nashville's a bit in flux too. That was the other thing I wanted to throw out there. That's what's tough for me to predict this year because, yeah, there's a lot of interesting young pieces we like. We've talked about it. You see, Soros is still a star. That's my one concern. That's my one concern. But let me just hit you with this. Last year was the only year out of the last nine that he wasn't in the top 15 in Norris voting. I'm pretty yeah. sure there's no other D-man who's been that consistently good. I'll leave it at that. And I'll, I'll finish with this as well before we get hey. over Miko ranting in. Um, th this is in my Yahoo Fantasy League. Uh, so again, stats could be different in obviously different formats. But yeah. Roman, he finished uh, 65, ranked 65th in the Fantasy League. Uh, Marit Sider was 78 and again, yeah. finished, uh, Yossi finished with 206 fantasy points. Sider finished with 202 fantasy points. Whoa. Very close. But again, Sider played a full 82 games. Yossi played only 68 games or 67 games. So mm -hmm. again, obviously it's yeah. a big, yeah. if yeah. it's fully healthy, but again, Yossi still finished with more fantasy points with again, <laughs> 13 less games. 15 less games than Marit Sider. So mm. I'm taking Yossi every single day, but Sider again, one, two more years in the league. I think he's going to be right there with some of those other young players, a uh, young defenseman that we've been talking about. Let's get over to this guy though. Miko Ranton and coming in at 14th overall. This was my fantasy draft. pick. Hey. Um, absolutely loved him as well. And I think potentially that we could see three Colorado Av avalanche players go in the first round. Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr, Miko Ranton. Again, it's debatable. But not I think Jonathan Drouin? No, I'm kidding. Nah, no, probably not. Probably not. No, probably uh, not. But we could potentially see three Colorado Avalanche players getting drafted in the first round of Fantasy League. Yeah, I don't really hate just, it. Really just exploded this past year with the amount of injuries the Avalanche had. He had to yeah. carry the team to, in order to get to the postseason. Obviously, Gorgiev was great, too. Great uh, and a few other, uh, A few other uh, highlights in there as well. But great first point. five seasons in the NHL uh, – his shot, you know, his shot attempts or shots on net mm. were anywhere between 110 and 190. Yet his shooting percentage yeah. was consistently amazing, even though with the low shot mm. attempts, he was mm. sh his shooting percentage was 15 to 17 percent. And you look at this past year, almost doubled in shot attempts, and his shooting percentage actually increased to 18 percent. He had nine game winning like goals, 55 goals compared to the 30. 30 uh, consistent 30 goal seasons mm -hmm. that we've seen in the past. Again, a first 100 uh, triple point season, 105 points. Obviously, again, if he's got Kale McCarr back fully healthy, Nathan McKinnon back fully healthy, who knows what's going on with Gabriel Landeskog at this point. But um, again, if he's got a full guys uh, mm -hmm. healthy and ready to go, I could see him get 115 points potentially. First thing that I'm a little bit wary about is just somewhat of a small sample size on these elite numbers. And I know the year before he had 92 points, I'm just more so thinking about the goal scoring. 55 goals is going to be really, really hard for him to repeat, but I'm not going to come on here for a second and say that I'm not still willing to take him basically right at the same spot. And I'll tell you the main two reasons, Steele. He gets to play with one of my favorite players that I've ever seen play live, and that's Nathan McKinnon. Lucky enough to see the Avalanche two years ago. That guy can skate almost as good as Connor McDavid, and I've also been lucky enough to watch him play. That's saying something. So number one, that ties very closely to my value take with Rantanen. 
Can Nathan McKinnon, he plays a pretty rough edge. Can he stay healthy for 82 games? Then I'm fine with triple digit expectations for Miko Rantanen. Is 55 goals going to happen? I'm going to say almost definitely not. But 40 plus, very much in the realm. And the second point why I'm fine with it, Steele, other than the Carolina Hurricanes, and this is what I want your take on, I'm fine running out Devin Taves, Kale McCarr, Bowen Byram, Josh Manson, Jack Johnson, and Sam Gerrard on any six-man unit in the league. Carolina's right there, though, after what they've done bringing in Orlov and D'Angelo. Very balanced as well. But that props up what the forwards are being able to do because they know on the back end, they're sorted. Look, all, fantasy fantasy view aside, Devin Taves does not get enough respect for his defensive ability. Agreed. And his hockey league. He Agreed. is one of the best defensemen, a defensive defenseman in this league, and he doesn't get enough credit to his name. So Devin I Taves, I agree at, wholeheartedly with what you just said about the, Thank you, the, sir. the decor with, with the avalanche. Uh, with Miko Rantanen, though, I think the numbers speak for themselves. 84 points in 2017, 87 in 2018. 41 in a shortened season in 2019. Uh, again, the numbers just seem to continuously mm. increase every single year. I love this player. So, again, we could easily see Rantanen, uh, McKinnon, and McCarr get taken in the first round of fantasy I hockey agree. leagues. Even potentially this guy as well. We've been talking hey. a little about him as well as his brother. Brady hey. Kachuk coming in at 13th overall, the first pick in the second draft. And, again, I'm going to leave this short because I've been talking yeah, about him all season long. Mm -hmm. You practically never see players like Brady Kachuk in the NHL. He's like a rare, rare little unicorn. Uh, yeah, rare little unicorn who will just demolish you in the corners. 30 goal scorer, 80 plus points, 300 mm. plus shots, 300 mm. plus hits, 125 mm -hmm. penalty minutes. The list goes on. The team is getting well. better. Um, again, he's a, he's like a unicorn. You just don't see this that often in, in fantasy leagues where a guy can <laughs> put up that amount of points with those shots, those hits and those penalty minutes. It's insane. I like that. You said 300 plus hits. Cause this is where I need to hold you down. 242 hits last year is 300 plus out of the realm. No. Anyway, that's why we're here to do it together. Cause I can already hear the Twitter warriors from the Ottawa fan base getting at us, <laughs> but everything else you're saying is so spot on a guy that can also put up 126 penalty minutes play with the edge that he can. And I know sometimes he has to rein that in. He's married now. He's going to be. <laughs> hey, hold on. Let me check the age. He will be 24 years old when the season starts. Steel birthday coming up as well. I think this guy's really ready to harness his role as the leader of this team yep. and this franchise on and off the ice. We saw what his brother was just able to do in his second stepping out season. Now he's done it twice. They're cut from an NHL franchise cloth. Say what you will about Boozy Daddy Keith. <laughs> These two guys can play. They can lead their teams. They do it on the ice. They do it off the ice. They do it nitty gritty in the corners. And what's most impressive to me about both brothers, and I know I'm kind of grouping them together, but they do play a very similar style. They come up in the clutch. Yep. They seem to actually elevate their game in the big moments. That's something you can't teach. Maybe some of the Toronto main beliefs Stat, uh, roster fans need to take a look at how to step up in the clutch. Anyway, Brady Kachuk, for me, Steele, he's a first-round pick. If you're in a draft of 10 or more GMs, I'm going to say even nine or more GMs, looking at that 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, yep. even 13th, 14th in the first round, so fine with it. If you're above that, I'm a little wary because there's so many big names above him still. And I mean so many, about yep. seven or eight. I'm going to say back end of the first, early second. I'm so fine with it. And I'll put his brother a little bit ahead of that. Absolutely agree with that. As well with Matthew Kachuk take, he should be going ahead of Brady just because of what he's been doing the last two seasons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We will continue some of these draft rewinds. Uh, again, a, a couple of goalies went in the first round. Stay hey. away from that. We hey, are speaking not of taking, goalies, we speaking of goalies, are not still. taking goalies in the first round. Let's not forget about goalie expert and fantasy guru Michael Amato from Sportsnet.ca and GoaliePost.com joining us on tomorrow's episode. I'm hype. Take us away, brother. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, making it your first listen every single day. Make sure you're tuning in Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning. Eastern time is when you can find all of our episodes. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. 
Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there, your summer bets out there. Hey. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace. Hey, Prime members. You can listen to this Locked On podcast ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. 